Anyway, it is um, now less than two hours until the two-minute silence at 11 o'clock, marking Armistice Day. Now, it's also a very big weekend for the royal family, of course, because the king and queen are going to attend the National Service of Remembrance at the Cenotaph tomorrow, uh, Remembrance Sunday. And, of course, then all, all the other royals will line up and do their bit, put the wreaths on the Cenotaph. Yeah. Uh, let's talk to Vanity Fair royal reporter Katie Nicholl, who's here. Morning to you, Katie. I mean, this is... It's significant in some respects because it is the first time we've seen the king do this within his own right as monarch, as, as, as monarch. rather than on behalf of the late queen. But yet it, it reinforces, with that continuity, I guess, just how important uh, the royals are to the armed forces and the armed forces are to the royals. It's a really important symbiotic relationship that dates back centuries. I mean, the monarch has always been the head of the armed forces. And um, interestingly, the wreath that the king is going to lay bears real resemblance to the wreath that the late King George VI laid. It's, it looks very, very similar. I know earlier you showed some amazing footage of, of King George VI laying that wreath. That was, of course, Charles's grandfather, the Queen's father. Um, and, you know, I think George VI has probably been on people's minds this week because when you think back to the state opening of Parliament and watching the King deliver his first ever outline of the government's legislation, <clears throat> we haven't seen a King do that um, in over 70 years. So I think there is a real sense of history here. And, of course, Charles served in the Navy himself. Um the one royal who's not going to be there will be Prince Harry because he's in California. Um, and I think, ironically, given that Prince Harry served two tours of Afghanistan for him, you know, to not be here or not have a wreath laid in his honour, I can only imagine for the Duke of Sussex must be a, a pretty poignant and probably quite difficult personal moment. I know he's yeah. found ways of marking the Remembrance Weekend in his own ways, but I can't imagine that anything matches being at the Cenotaph, mm. right, and, and doing that. But, and we spoke earlier, didn't we, about the fact that the Queen will not be laying a wreath. She's going to be following very much. Um, in previous footsteps, she will be up on the balcony along with the Princess of Wales. Um, and um, it, it'll be the Prince of Wales and, and the King who are laying wreaths in their own right, in these new titles for the very first time. It's mm. interesting you mentioned Prince Harry there. Apparently he has been seen out and about in uh, America wearing a poppy. Where of course, th that's not worn in, in America. Absolutely. So he has wanted to do that. And wearing his medals. And right. that's something that, you know, wearing his, his military uniform is not allowed to do anymore because he's sort of decommissioned out of the royal family, out of the, out of the army. And I think that's just a, a, a symbol. It doesn't matter where he is in the world, who he's with or what he's doing, he will wear that poppy with pride, he will wear those medals with pride. And some might say he has more right than most to do that. Well, yes, look, there can be a lot of criticism uh, thrown at Harry at times, mm. but not on that. I would dare anyone to criticise him. No, I agree with that. that. He's, he's yeah. earned that. He did his bit, didn't he? Really? Absolutely yeah. agree with you. Mm. Um, can we talk about, on a sort of happier note, if you like, um, this picture of the king? Yes. Because it's, cause it's actually um, all to do with the big issue, isn't it? It, which is, it's which the big is issue. Nice. But it's, it's this new photograph that's been taken, marking his 75th birthday, and we just think it's wonderful. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's great. I hope the cameras capture it close enough for you, and if not, go and buy your papers today and you can see it, or better still, go and buy the big issue when it comes out yeah, next well, week. Yes. Um, this is to um, mark Charles's 75th birthday. It was taken by Rankin, um, I think in October, in the gardens of Clarence House. And um, when you compare it to the image that was taken also by Rankin of the late Queen to commemorate her 75th, I mean, oh. I don't really need to point out the differences, no. do I? Mm. There's a really stark contrast Although here. I have to say, even the one of the Queen there... Um, it's warm. It's, it's very warm and natural. Absolutely. I think Rankin does manage to, to get but that. The he, one of Charles is, is very, very good. Well, he's managed to get that wonderful, sharp focus. And I think the way the king is turning towards mm. the camera, he's got a slight smile on his yeah. face. He's not looking too serious, but he clearly means business, as is reflected by the fact that he's wearing his double-breasted pinstripe suit. <laughs> but there is somehow... There's a twinkle. There. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. There is, there's a warmth. There's Anne says there is a warmth, which he captured with the late Queen as well. And, and he's looking right at us. Absolutely. Yes. I think it's an interesting it's choice. It's a very good portrait. Interesting choice not to use colour. You know, mm. And I think that picture mm. just draws you in. And this is, I must say, this is all to not just 
mark his 75th birthday, which will be taking place really from Monday and across Tuesday. Tuesday night is going to be a lovely party at Clarence House. But but this particular um, image and interview, not with the Queen, but with um, the CEO of the Prince's Trust now, by the way, the King's, King's Trust. Trust. We've yeah. just had that announcement in time oh, for the 75th, yes. that it's now become the King's Trust more than anything, I think, to avoid any confusion with the Prince of Wales and his well, royal exactly. foundation. Isn't that interesting? Because he's got his own charities now. Absolutely. And the Prince's Trust has always been Charles's always. baby, if you like, hasn't it? Yes, it has. And obviously he's decided, no, I'm not going to hand it on to William. I'm going to keep it. And well, it's, it's interesting. That's going to take some getting it's, used to, isn't it? It's interesting because in one of the books that I wrote, I was told by a very good source that William was offered the chance to inherit the Prince's Trust. Charles did want to hand it down. But of course, by this point, William had his own initiatives. He had his own foundation. So this is a very neat way of making this not an issue, not having any confusion over the Prince's Trust, the King's Trust. And one of the big projects that's being launched is this coronation food project. And that's what the big issue is all about. Basically taking our surplus food waste and distributing it to people who need it. And I think mm. when you see the King focusing all of his birthday celebrations actually over this key issue, it really shows that um, he's got his finger on the pulse. He knows the issues that are affecting real people and he's using his birthday celebrations to put the spotlight on that. Yeah. Oh, good on, good on him. I've got a huge amount of respect for him. He's, mind you, he's massacring that cake. <laughs> in, the, in the pictures, if you're listening on the radio. Yeah, yeah. Slice of cake. No cake was wasted. <laughs> well, well, no. Exactly, it wouldn't Because actually, isn't it, it, it is a scandal how much food waste there is. It is. How much gets thrown away, because it's you, bakery goods and things, because they just haven't sold on the day or whatever. And how many people are hungry? Yeah. And how many children are going to school hungry and depending on that school lunch? And the lunch. thing about mm. the Prince's Trust, now the King's Trust, is, I mean, you've obviously looked into it too, it is incredibly impressive organisation. It really does help people. Oh, it's it helped does, millions it's of young some people. It's not fancy fund, no. you know, mm. a royal seal. No. It actually really does help people. Well, the Prince of Wales set it up, I think it was back in the 60s, when he left the Navy and he got his naval severance and decided he was going to set something up because he knew he was in for a long wait. And he was determined that he was actually going to do something useful with his time, not just be a Prince of Wales in waiting. Mm. And that trust has genuinely help millions of people, not just here in Britain, get onto that rung of the ladder, but around the world. I mean, when he was in Kenya recently, he went to visit some of the some of the people who've benefited from the international arm mm. of the Prince's Trust. And I think it brings him great satisfaction that this is a legacy project that works and he was going to make sure it continued even when he became king. And as we say, it's now the King's Trust. Oh, it's hard enough to remember he's the king at times. I know. Prince Charles. We still the slip king's, up sometimes, don't we? The king's trust. Yes. Oh, it's got a lovely ring to it. Yes, it has. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. doesn't it? It does sound good. Yeah. Oh, good on him. You know, he's turning out to be quite cool, isn't he? I'm, I think that picture says it all. Yeah, it really does.